And joining us now is Republican Congressman Mark Alford. Uh, Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, he represents Missouri's 4th District, voted not to remove McCarthy from the Speaker's uh, seat. Uh, Congressman, can you take us through what you saw happen today? Well, a, a little bit of chaos, kind of like you're hearing now in uh, Statuary Hall, a lot of activity here. But look, uh, we knew that this moment was coming. We knew that Matt Gates and others who never wanted Kevin McCarthy were speaker were going to pull this. It was only a matter of time when you uh, get down to only having to have one vote to bring before the House of Representatives a motion to vacate. We knew this moment was coming. I think Kevin McCarthy knew this moment was coming. Uh, look, we have stuck behind Kevin McCarthy for several reasons. He is the only person who could have held this slim majority uh, in our conference together to get the 218 votes that we needed to secure the border for parents' bill of rights, to make us energy independent once again, to get these 12 appropriation bills across the finish line, to get this continuing resolution done. Uh, originally, we wanted a continuing resolution that had border security. We didn't get that because they voted against it. And now we're stuck, as you just heard Speaker McCarthy or the former speaker say, with a, a border that is letting fentanyl across, human sex trafficking across, six million illegal aliens into our country each year. We are in trouble. And right now, the Republican ship does not have a rudder. They have told us to go home, come back Tuesday. We're going to have a, 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 a forum where all the candidates now who uh, want to put their names forward for speaker will will give their uh, spiel to be speaker, and then on Wednesday we're going to vote for it. We'll see what happens, but I think it's a disgrace what has happened to the speaker who has fought so hard for our conference and our country. Uh, Congressman, uh, I'm sorry to ask this, but it does seem like we are starting to see a new playbook written in this almost asymmetric political warfare that's been happening in Washington. It, it almost seems as though the way it stands right now, all you need is a very small group of a dissenting uh, minority to decide to boot the most powerful person in Congress. Well, that's right. This time it took eight, but this is something that Kevin McCarthy and our conference agreed to, and it passed through rules, that it only takes one person to bring forth a, a motion to vacate. Uh, Kevin McCarthy did that because, uh, look, we originally, and I proposed, and I supported uh, to have uh, a majority of the majority, a 50 percent plus one of our conference uh, being able to call for a motion to vacate. That did not happen. Uh, in order to get the speakership back in January, Kevin McCarthy conceded. I think this was the Achilles heel, and it's going to be the same for the next speaker. It doesn't matter who you get to fill this. It is going to be a tenuous situation for any speaker. Uh, that's why it, it, it's almost an unbearable, unfathomable position to be in, to try to guide, to, to uh, herd cats, basically, in a house that is divided. How do you put Pandora back in the... <laughs> parliamentarian rules box here? Well, you got to change the rule. And you got to get 218 votes to do that. That's not happening. I think we're stuck right. with this for the, for the short time. Uh, but we're going to have to find a leader. And uh, so, look, we're going to have to find a leader who's going to build consensus. But this is something that the eight who voted against Kevin McCarthy are not going to stomach. And uh, you're not going to find anyone, I think, any more conservative than Kevin McCarthy was or is to help bridge the gap and bring people together. Kevin McCarthy did not make deals with the Democrats. That was a lie that was propagated by those who wanted to see him out. Last question here. I know you don't have a crystal ball, but how long do you see this chaos ensuing? I wish I knew. All I know is that I did not give up my career along with the other freshmen in this class, traveled 24 counties and 70,000 miles in my Ford Expedition to come here and put up with this bull. We have got to get on with the business of making America great again, rebuilding our military, cutting spending, and getting back to the business of doing business in America, bring down inflation, reduce our spending. We cannot do that now. We are going back home after Matt Gates complained that we were technically on vacation for six months in August. I call BS on that. I worked my butt off in our district. We had 12 town hall meetings. We had fentanyl forums. We don't take breaks in Congress, so give me a break. 
Congressman Mark Alford, I know you've, you've got places to be on this very busy night, but thank you so much for stopping by and joining us. Thank you, Getty. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.